Hey everybody, Jamie Lee here from Birdrix with my budgie blueberry and my galah bondi. And today I'm gonna to be going over the worst parrot advice you guys have ever heard. Now I took submissions from my patrons over on patreon.com forward slash bird tricks and you guys had some pretty interesting things to say. Are you sticking around? You gonna be part of this video? We all know people just come here to see you guys. So you gotta be here. Are you gonna stay? Okay. So first of all, I know everybody's probably like, whoa, another hair color. You don't usually draw attention. It said ginger. Does this look ginger to you? This looks like fire to me. So I don't know, maybe they just couldn't put that on the label. Bondi, you're pacing. It's making me a little anxious. Bondi. <laughs> Seriously. Okay, come read this with me. Hey cutie. So Crystal wrote in and said the worst parrot advice she had ever received is feed primarily fruit. Oh no. We received this advice early on which is what led me down my entire diet hole. <laughs> um, and Bondi was my introduction to diet because I was giving her too much fruit which not only affected her behavior but it affected everything. She ended up with fatty liver. She actually um, on a flight trip, we noticed through behavior, but then as we looked closer, she had actually plucked under her wings very subtly, but just enough. And sometimes you still notice it because she damaged the follicle just from that one thing. And so many times, especially from cockatoo owners, I hear that when people cut out fruit entirely, plucking stops. So consider it. Fruit at the very maximum should just be a high value reward unless you have a fruit based diet type bird like the lorry or the lorikeet or even a toucan who needs a lot more fruit in their diet but generally most parrot species do not require it in their diet. It's more of a treat food um, and the most nutritional value you're going to get is from berries. You are very busy, busier than an actual berry who's just preening. Will you be more calm if you're just like this? I'm gonna give you a nut and you can chill. Can you eat like that? <laughs> so cute. That might be a little hard and you got it all over you. Messy, messy, here you go, you saved it. I, Brittany wrote, I was told by the pet shop I got my bird at to wait six months before trying any kind of diet or food conversion. They do really care about birds, so maybe they've seen diet conversions go bad. Yes, this isn't necessarily bad advice. Um, diet conversion, I think, is just misunderstood where people think that they have to starve their bird to get them to eat the healthy food, and that's really not the case. Are we back to pacing? Uh, so a lot of the times when a bird is moving locations, it can be a setback. So for example, if a bird is newly weaned and then moves to the owner's house and the, the entire environment is different, sometimes they revert back and need a comfort feeding. Um, a lot of birds have a hard time moving locations and changing environments. And so it can, there can be kind of setbacks when it comes to eating. So for me with diet conversion, I like to tackle it right away, but I do understand that people, like just generally speaking, people that don't have any experience with it or aren't really sure what they're doing, uh, may want to wait and make sure that the bird is eating before they attempt it. A slow diet conversion is always best if you're unsure about what you're doing. For me with diet conversion, how I see it is just providing healthy foods all the time. So the bird's never hungry, it always has food available to it, and you're making sure that it's fun and interesting and that they're getting into those foods um, right away. So you're just kind of making it fun and making sure that they're eating at the same time. And a scale is always 100% recommended during diet conversion because sometimes birds can look hungry and they're not, and sometimes they don't look hungry and they are. Um, so it can be really misleading and you wanna make sure that you're watching that scale to make sure that you can tell whether or not they're actually eating. So 
sometimes it looks like they may have just powdered their pellets and didn't eat anything, when in reality they actually did eat and have just leftovers. So just kind of depends. Um, for example, this girl right here, she likes to dunk her pellets and make kind of a soup. My macaws just eat their pellets, leave nothing left. My conures powder their pellets, so even though they're full, there's still powder left. Um, there's all different ways to eat food, and so that scale is your number one tool. Okay, Miss Pace a lot. I don't know if I can handle this for the entire duration of the video. <sighs> oh man, Jennifer wrote in and said, after determining some cut up an apples were no good, someone told me it's okay, the birds will still eat it. If it's really spoiled, then they know not to eat it. Do you think that's true? You never want to leave spoiled food out for your birds. So when you're giving fresh food, uh, my birds actually consume it within 30 minutes and there's nothing left because you guys are such good eaters. Hey, cutie. Uh, hey, cutie. <laughs> um, all right, let me actually cue it. Okay. Uh, but for birds that just tend to leave it around, you might need to do smaller portions more often so that it, so that it doesn't go bad. I started something. Thank you. Oh, good job. You like never say thank you. I want that one. Big treat for that one. I uh, lost my train of thought. Anyways, don't leave food out, fresh food out for more than three hours. Um, especially foods that you can tell are starting to brown and things like that. You definitely want to get them out of there so that your bird isn't exploring or checking it out. Whoa, hey cutie. Did I choose the wrong bird for this video? Seriously. Can you say thank you again? Thank you. You said thank you. Oh, I love you, Bondi. Ooh, Donna wrote in. This is one that just totally is a bummer. She said, I can feed my bird any people food except dairy and chocolate. Now my bird begs when I eat. So she was told to feed her bird anything except for dairy and chocolate. That's kind of like the kitchen sink diet where it's like, oh, this won't kill my bird. This won't kill my bird. This won't kill my bird. Chop, chop, chop into a bowl it goes. Yay. No, um, especially when you start sharing your food with your bird, you just create almost like a begging dog behavior where they, they learn to expect that you share it all the time. And so when you have something they can't have, it'll wick them off. Hey cutie. Hey cutie. And they won't sound that cute. Okay. Hey cutie. Hey cutie. <laughs> You're just all about the cuties. Ooh, Lee Fang wrote, and this is kind of similar. She said, that she was told don't change their diet for at least eight weeks and don't give fresh food or fruit in that time either. Ah! No, you always wanna be exploring and giving them new fresh foods to try and eat. That should be an, a constant thing, especially if you struggle with diet conversion. If you could stop being psycho for two seconds, that would be awesome. <laughs> Ooh. This is a brutal one. August wrote in and said the worst parrot advice she ever received was actually from her vet. And she said, recently from a vet, I won't be visiting again. They said, feed your bird Harrison's and dried fruit and avoid dark leafy greens. What? First of all, those of you that have your birds on pellets, check the ingredients. I'm not gonna like take this time to badmouth any certain brands, but if the first few ingredients contain sunflower seeds, peanuts, corn, you're not on a good brand of pellet. Nicole wrote, I was told by the breeder that my three month old green wing macaw was fully weaned. OMG, that's freaking me out. Even the vet I took him to a week after I got him said his diet was fine. Luckily I had a consult with Dave who encouraged me to start hand feeding again. Whoa, you guys. So macaws, oh, they hand feed for a while. Hyacinth macaws can hand feed for up to a year, sometimes over a year. Just your average macaws, I mean, they should be hand feeding for at least four to five months. Uh, three months for a green wing, which is much larger than your scarlets or your blue and golds or your militaries, uh, it should be way more than three months. That's so, so early. And again, the bird does choose, and I'll admit that some birds choose to wean faster than others, but three months for a macaw of that size seems insane. Yes, ma'am, you are just antsy. Oh my goodness. Good thing I didn't wear, oh, you're gonna climb down anyway. I was gonna say, good thing I didn't wear long sleeves so you can't just climb down, but you're on your way anyway. 
You wanna go play on a foraging tree? No, you do not. You're still gonna jump down. And it's over. Wow, okay, so Nancy wrote in and said the worst parrot advice she's ever received is from Blueberry, who will be quiet. <laughs> Where are you? Oh, you're right there. Okay. Oh, sorry, Blue. Scared. Um, okay, is from a bird magazine, no longer available, one mantra was always have food in front of your bird. It will become anxious unless it can eat whenever it wants. <laughs> wow. Um, I will say, like, maybe if your bird came from an extreme background where it was always hungry, um, ooh, but like from a point of neglect and just hardship. But most pet birds do not need food in front of their faces 24-7. Uh, definitely not. That'll work against you. Now, if you want to give treats whenever your bird's able and willing, that'll up your relationship. But just having food available 24-7, nope. <laughs> Speaking of food 24-7, thank you. Oh my God, you said thank you. Oh, almost didn't catch it. Just having a conversation with myself. Wow, okay, I haven't read these and I'm just glancing at them and freaking out. So, Davida wrote in and said, the worst parrot advice they've received is when I picked up my conure from a parrot boarding place. The woman gave me a list of all the foods she discovered my bird loved. She suggested that Kashi cereal was a better choice for my bird than pellets. And she insisted that I buy specific varieties of apples based on a taste test she'd done with him. She also told me that walnuts were too high in fat to be used as a treat and reward, and I was already on your seasonal feeding system, so I ignored her. <laughs> oh, okay. Whoa, I love that last part. What are you freaking out about? Um, <clears throat> yeah, so, funny, but so, so cereal is not better than pellets. We'll just, we'll just leave it right there. Mm. Hey cutie, all right. Barbara wrote and said the worst parrot advice she's ever received is there is a law that you have to clip military macaws because they are hostile and will dive bomb you. This I heard from a friend who had one. All right, military macaws, we do give them a hard time here on the channel. They, they are difficult macaws. Out of all the macaw species, male militaries especially, are difficult species. However, <laughs> clipping is just kind of putting a band-aid on the real problem, which is behavioral. If you can't fix the behavioral problem, clipping is not the answer. Clipping is just gonna cover up what the real issue is. So yeah, screw any laws of clipping, not cool. Uh, I feel you on how difficult military macaws are, but clipping's not the answer. Let us help you with a one-on-one -on -one consult. Oh, Sierra wrote, worst parrot advice I received is you should clip the wings so they don't hurt themselves while attempting to fly. This is often said when parrots are fledging. So they're, they're babies, they're just learning to fly, just as like a human child's just learning to walk. They bump into things, they fall down, they get hurt. It's a normal part of learning and the learning process. And and they are gonna hit things. Um, however, you can work with them and training and kind of just as you would kid-proof your home, you can kind of bird-proof your home for a bird that's just learning to fly by teaching them what windows are and mirrors and getting them to understand those concepts so that they don't pose a threat or a danger. So there are ways around. You do not have to clip a fledging bird. Um, actually, it's probably the worst thing you can do. Oh, here's another one. To the worst parrot advice Li Fang received was keep your sun conure clipped because they become jerks when flighted. <laughs> um, I think they could be jerks when they're not flighted as well. Ooh, August writes, clip your bird's wings. It will make him sweet and more tame. No, it just takes away the ability to get away from you faster. So you think that it's tame, but the second they have wings, the real problem is there and it showed that you probably didn't use the best techniques to tame. Hey, you cutie. Oh, okay, worst parrot advice ever. Tasha writes, never let your bird perch higher than or level with your eyes. This is, <sighs> okay, 
Birds feel safe when they are high up. They are meant to fly, they are meant to live in trees. Um, it's their safety. So they naturally want to be higher than you. It's not a I'm taller than you and now I dominate you. It's just a safety thing. Um, and if they don't come down, it's because it's really awkward to ask a bird to step up when it's actually stepping down onto you. It's easier to ask a bird to step up onto something than down onto something. Um, so it's just an awkward variable, which is why when you get higher up and are able to ask from a comfortable level, it just becomes a lot easier. Right? <laughs> Um, also clip their wings for their own safety. We went over that one. Don't let them get above you ever because they'll believe you're a submissive <laughs> flock member. Oh, submissive. So apparently I'm dominant, now I'm submissive. Well, I could get pooped on from there, so maybe. <laughs> oh, here's one. Worst parrot advice ever, towel your bird when it gets aggressive. If your bird bites you, grab the towel and toss it on your bird. The idea was the bird was displaying dominance and you needed to get them onto the floor to restore your dominance. The towel was never meant to hurt the bird, merely disorienting enough that they fall off the perch. <laughs> then she wrote effed up, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, it is. Super. I don't even think I can, I'm not even going to elaborate on that one. Oh, here's one. I was at the pet store and the worker told me if the cockatoo bit me to hold its beak and tap it and say no. That sounds like I'm starting a fight with a cockatoo and I'm gonna lose. I would never. Um, first of all, that's just gonna make old bird really angry, right cutie? Uh, no, just, just no. Hey cutie. Okay, somebody, I hope you take a shot every time she says hey cutie in this video. It could be a game. <laughs> Or if somebody just wants to count up how many times she said, hey, cutie, in this video, you win. Because I'm not counting. But we're still adding. Okay. Ooh, punish the bird for biting by flicking its beak. No. Just no. Do you want to go play on your foraging tree, please? There's so many good things up there. So many good things. <laughs> She's coming back. Ooh, worst parrot advice ever, that if I just grab my bird and force him to spend time with me, that he'd start to like me. I hear that works with relationships too. Creepy. When I was about 10, a friend of my folks had a macaw. They told me to blow hard in the bird's face if it's bad. That actually turns Cressy on, so nope. Uh, nope. Uh, no. When I got my parrotlet, the breeder told me to hold him in my hand or wrap him in a towel several times a day. Then they will learn to love cuddles. <laughs> Could you? So I'm not a physical touch person. I can't imagine that if Dave wrapped me up in a towel and just forced me to cuddle, that I would suddenly decide one day, like, I love this. I don't think that's how it works. Maybe they learn to give up and tolerate it because they learn they have no other choice. Um, that's called flooding. Uh, they went on to say, he won't even accept a head scratch. I knew better because of you guys. He doesn't have to accept scratch scratches. I was also told and hear it a lot to let them sit in their cage for a week so they can get comfortable. Then you hear that the bird will never come out. Yeah, I hate that advice. Um, a lot of people still disagree with me on that. And I'm sure that there's the circumstances that call for possibly leaving an animal in to settle, especially if they're like super anxiety ridden, they thrash, you know, if there's, if there's an, a chance that they could hurt themselves otherwise because the fear is so bad. Um, I don't usually deal with extreme cases like that. So uh, that hasn't come into play for me, but I tend to want to, initiate contact right away. And it's not even me initiating. I tend to try to open up the environment so that the bird can come to me and initiate contact with me um, and just give it the option to do that all day so that hopefully it happens and we can build an awesome bond and my shoulders are red from your nails. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> okay, eat that up there. Let's see how long it takes one Mississippi. 
squirt the bird when it misbehaves or place it back in the cage when it misbehaves. No, patterns are bad. A doesn't equal B. A should equal A through Z. Um, it should be unpredictable. So, and you should never use water as a form of punishment. You shouldn't be using punishment anyway with birds. Um, but water should be an awesome thing where birds love to bathe and they enjoy it. You never wanna make it a punishing sort of thing. And the cage should be the same thing. <laughs> How many Mississippis was that, you guys? Uh, cage should be the same thing, a place where they enjoy being. It's like their room, it's like your room. Uh, it should be a form of enrichment. It shouldn't be used as like punishment. It's not cool. <coughs> that to tame a bird, you restrain it in a towel or your hands until it settles down. Repeatedly over months. Whoo! There's a lot of these. Oh, oh, you're back. Okay, worst parrot advice from Robbie. He or she will fit in that cage. Some pet shops in my country sell Indian ringnecks. That's how I got mine, but the largest cage I've seen them sell may hold max one or two cockatiels. I didn't have any other choice, didn't know I could find a cage online, so I went for it. I felt super bad when I realized it won't work. In one month, I got him the largest cage that I could fit in my room and swore never to trust pet shop employees where I live again. That's really sad. Um, just remember bigger is better. You wanna make their space somewhere they want to be. So what is the deal? What is so exciting? That's it, you just wanted my attention and you got it. Trained. <laughs> if you have a round cage, you're torturing your birds. They run around in circles and can't get a frame of reference. <laughs> I have a whole video on this topic because that is baloney. I love you so much. Oh, here's one. Sherry wrote the worst parrot advice she ever got was that a single bird can never be happy on its own, so buy it a friend. You just need me, right? <laughs> Just kidding. Um, so birds are flock oriented. They live in flocks. They're very social creatures. So if you are going to opt between leaving your bird alone all the time and having it a buddy nearby, I would say definitely have it a buddy. They need the social interaction. But all of my birds I house individually as often as I can because I don't want them to suddenly decide like, don't like you today, I want that perch, I'm gonna kick your butt. Um, so there's a safety element too. When you just go and pick a friend for your bird, it doesn't always work out the way you want. So I think everybody needs to be um, aware of worst case scenario. What if they don't get along? What if they're not the best friends that you thought they'd be? Now you're dividing your time among two birds. So most people that have a single bird are interacting with that bird like crazy. Like Blue to the Berry. Oh, where did Blue to the Berry go? Did you scare, did you scare her away? Blue to the Berry runs this house um, and is very happy doing so and usually wants everybody to leave, including humans, including visiting humans. Unlike this one, who's like, bring on all the visitors. Oh, nice. Can you say thank you again? Thank you. Thank you. All right. Lucia wrote, it's not really an advice, but people keep commenting on Elvis being my only, oh my gosh, I cannot talk over you. <sighs> How many hate cuties are we at? I think we need to go to part two. Part two.